Welcome to Life Extension's lecture series for 2009. My name is Dr. Michael Smith, and today's topic, Big Bellies and Heart Attacks. As you may know, mainstream medicine focuses only on traditional risk factors that put your heart at risk. Things like obesity, cholesterol, high blood sugar levels, or even high blood pressure. But that's it. Here at Life Extension, we've identified 17 risk factors that put your heart at risk. And we're going to cover a few of those today. Life Extension calls the risk factors the daggers that might affect your heart. And we've identified 17 of them. The first dagger is excess LDL cholesterol or too low of HDL cholesterol. Now remember, LDL cholesterol is the lousy stuff. You want that to be low, less than 100. The HDL is the happy cholesterol. That's the stuff you want really high. At life extension, we do believe that cholesterol still puts your heart at risk. Now, there's a lot of people out there that talk about cholesterol is not important anymore, and that's just not true. The Framingham Heart Study clearly shows that if you have excess cholesterol, especially the LDL, the lousy stuff, your heart is at risk. And we want you to minimize this risk factor or dagger. If you have excess LDL cholesterol, the lousy stuff, something like red yeast rice is a great way to bring that down. Also, citrus and palm extract. One of the new ones comes from black tea called theoflavin and even soluble fiber. Make sure you're getting about 20 to 25 grams of fiber in your diet every day and most of that needs to be of the soluble kind. Now, if you're low on the good cholesterol, the HDL, we have some solutions for you here at Life Extension. First off, you've got to exercise. Exercise is the number one way to raise the good cholesterol. Additional things, try some niacin, the good old fashioned B3 vitamin. Niacin, about 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day, will raise the HDL. Now, here's one I'm really excited about and Life Extension's excited about. Indian gooseberry. Indian gooseberry has been shown to raise the good cholesterol, HDL, just as good as niacin without any side effects. So once again, cholesterol is one of those daggers. We got to lower the bad stuff and we got to raise the good cholesterol. Now the second dagger has to do with too much sugar in your blood and too much of that important hormone called insulin. When you have too much blood sugar and too much insulin, it puts your heart at risk for many different problems. Now at Life Extension, if you have too much blood sugar, we have some suggestions. Cinnamon extract is a great way to lower excess blood sugar. Additionally, try some chromium. A trace mineral works fantastic for reducing blood sugar levels. Another one is an herb called coffee berry. Coffee berry has been shown in studies to help reduce blood sugar levels after you've eaten. And lastly, again, think about fiber. 20 to 25 grams of fiber in your diet can help to reduce blood sugar levels. Now, when you have too much sugar in your blood, that raises the important hormone called insulin. When you get too much insulin in your blood, that could lead to this thing called insulin resistance. That's not a good thing. Some suggestions, lipoic acid. Lipoic acid is one of the best things you can do in your diet to make your body more sensitive to insulin. Also, try some dark chocolate. Cocoa polyphenols, which are the antioxidants from dark chocolate, they also make your body more responsive to insulin. Have you ever heard of white kidney bean extract? This is an exciting new supplement that can also make your body more sensitive to insulin. Lastly, hey, good old fashioned green tea extract. Drink a lot of green tea and maybe even take a supplement of green tea and you could improve your body's sensitivity to insulin. The third dagger has to do with inflammation. 
At Life Extension, we believe that inflammation is the common denominator of all chronic age-related diseases, and that includes your heart. The main things that we measure for inflammation in your blood, one is called C-reactive protein. Another one is called homocysteine. These are markers of that inflammation in your blood that's putting your heart at risk. If you have too much inflammation, if your CRP level is too high, we would suggest the omega-3 fatty acids from fish. Omega-3 fatty acids are a great way to ease inflammation and reduce your risk of heart disease. Additionally, curcumin from the turmeric spice, another great way to ease inflammation. You could even try theoflavins. Again, that's from black tea. They've been shown to help ease inflammation. Now, if you have too much homocysteine, we also have some solutions. Life extension number one would suggest that you get on a good, complete B complex. B vitamins are a great way to maintain healthy homocysteine levels. Additionally, try some folic acid, or maybe even the vitamin B6 or vitamin B12. Regardless of what we do here, though, we really have to reduce or ease inflammation if we want to protect your heart. Now, the next dagger has to do with vitamin K. How many of you realize vitamin K is essential to your heart? Quickly, vitamin K comes in two forms, K1 and K2. K2 is the one that we're going to focus on. K2 helps to take calcium out of your blood and put it into your bones. When you do that, not only do you protect your bones, you protect your arteries. The arteries become more healthy and that helps your heart. So vitamin K2 is important to get out of your diet. Leafy green vegetables and cruciferous vegetables. Fantastic way to get vitamin K, especially that vitamin K2. But you may need to supplement. And if you need to supplement with vitamin K2, we suggest 1,000 micrograms a day. Now here's the trick. When you use a vitamin K2 supplement, look on that label. Make sure you see this other form of vitamin K2 called MK7. MK7 is a form of vitamin K2 that has the most activity in the body. It's really going to protect your heart. And you want about 100 micrograms a day. If you have any questions about the daggers we just discussed, please call one of our health advisors. They're standing by to help you out. Now, all of those daggers that we just talked about, yeah, they put your heart at risk. But there's another thing that we have to talk about, and that's a big belly. The size of your waist predicts your risk for heart disease greater than any other parameter that a fitness trainer might look at when he measures any part of your body. It's the size of your waist, or what we call abdominal obesity. So here's Life Extension solution to big bellies. It's called the 250-250 rule. Every day, you're going to eat 250 fewer calories. On that same day, you're going to get out and you're going to burn 250 calories. That produces a 500 calorie deficit each day. Multiply that by seven, seven days a week. That's a 3,500 calorie deficit. 3,500 calorie deficit is one pound of weight loss. So what we've talked about today are some risk factors that mainstream medicine is not going to talk to you about. Those risk factors are daggers are putting your heart at risk. And we hopefully gave you some solutions to circumvent those risk factors and keep your heart healthy. My name is Dr. Michael Smith. Thank you for watching this video.